Welcome back to the channel. For this video series, we're going to walk through publishing a Python script to AWS Lambda. We're going to be using AWS Lambda, obviously, AWS ECR, Elastic Container Registry, AWS Event Bridge, and finally, AWS CloudFormation. Before we get started, real quick, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Sponsor me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors, subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking the video, and sharing it on platforms like Discord or Reddit, starting the repo on GitHub, and also following me on GitHub. All these can help me out a lot, and I really appreciate it. So to start off, what's the final product going to be? Well, it's going to be a Python script inside of a Docker container that's going to pull weather API data and email that data to us. We're going to have this Lambda function run on periodic intervals automatically using AWS EventBridge. We're also going to allow updates to the code using CI CD pipelines with GitHub Actions where CI CD stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment. And we're also going to create a template for creating additional Lambda functions with the same configurations as the one we created automatically without having to do any manual creation on the AWS Management Console. So what's the outline going to be for this video series? We're going to start off with the local setup. We're going to clone the repo, walk through the code locally and run it. We're going to run it on Lambda on AWS. Then we're going to modify the Lambda function using CI CD with GitHub Actions. We're going to use AWS Event Bridge to schedule it to run automatically. And finally, AWS CloudFormation to create the YAML setup script to create all the components necessary to run the Lambda function automatically without having to do anything on the management console. So AWS Lambda, what is it exactly? If you heard the term Lambda, you probably heard the term serverless. It means that you don't have to set up a web server, a database, or anything to get, any, to get a script running in the cloud. You just have to push the code and run it, and it gets working. This saves a lot on development time. It also auto-scales. When you're running the Lambda function, you can make multiple requests to that Lambda function, and the code will run in parallel, and it will automatically scale from just a few requests to thousands. So why would we use it? We already covered a few, but a big one that I didn't mention yet is packaging the functionality. You probably heard the term dry if you're familiar with programming concepts, where it stands for do not repeat yourself. If you're using multiple applications on AWS, you're deploying them, and they all share a common functionality, say pre-processing for machine learning data, you don't want to copy and paste that code through all your web applications because you're repeating code and yet if you have to modify it, you have to modify it in so many different places. Instead, package that code into a Lambda function and have your web apps call that function. Then you don't have to repeat the code. It makes updating the code so much easier and also cuts down on any errors and duplications. And like I said before, it auto scales from just a few requests to thousands. Amazon ECR, Elastic Container Registry, is exactly what it sounds like. It's container registry. It hosts the Docker image for our Lambda function so we can pull it in and use it in Lambda. EventBridge is what we use to schedule the running of our Lambda function. It uses cron syntax to do so. If you're not familiar with Linux, you can think of Windows Task Scheduler as a similar thing to use. It just recently replaced AWS CloudWatch if you're familiar with that. CloudFormation, this is infrastructure as code. We create a YAML script that we so we can create multiple resources on AWS, Lambda, the event bridge, and other components necessary to run the Lambda function without having to do anything manually on AWS. Why is this so important? Well, for one, it prevents any errors in manual configuration because it's everything pre-specified. And second, more importantly, if you're in an organization and you have many developers creating Lambda functions, you want standardization across the code base. By having a YAML script and everyone using the same script, you enforce standardization of the Lambda functions and cut down any kind of errors and variability. That's it for this video series. In the next video, we're going to clone the repo and start stepping through the code locally. Stay tuned for that one.